What is up, Bruins fans? Today I'm bringing you a clip from episode 362 of the Black and Gold Hockey Podcast for real Sam Smith and Mark Allred, joined by special guests Ben Kennedy and Amon McLean, discuss the latest rumors around Bruins goaltender Jeremy Swayman. Uh, moving on, we're going to move on to uh, to Jeremy Swayman. Whoa. Again, we're going to talk about Swayman again. It's, it seems like it's a, we're turning into a broken record at this point with this guy. Still not signed at this time. Uh but there were some new reports that came out, some conflicting reports. Elliot Friedman reported earlier in the week on his 32 Thoughts podcast on the Sportsnet that he wants a deal like Charlie McAvoy's, uh, which is about $9.5 million a season, uh, and that they're not close. However, Darren Drager of TSN is reporting that the Bruins uh, are uh, closer than previously reported with Swayman. So a lot of conflicting reports right now. Are they close? Are they not? Training camp is in less than a week. So you'd think that hopefully it would get it, they would try to get it done before training camp begins, right, Mark? Uh yeah, and I still believe it's it's gonna happen. Um uh Swayman's been in Boston. We've said this uh the last podcast. He's been around Boston, he's been working out with the team. And, and fellow teammates that, that currently live in, in the area. Um, he was at captain's practices. And there's a, I mean, there's such a bad narrative that, that he doesn't want to be here and so on. Uh, if he went home to Alaska, that's a different story. That's somebody that just wants to get away from the area and kind of clear their own head because of contract issues that are kind of, you know, fogging up the brain and so on. But this is a player that constantly says he wants to be a Bruin. He wants to live in Boston. He loves the area. He loves his teammates. He comes to captain's practices. Those are signs of somebody that wants to get ready for the upcoming season. So, again, I know we're regurgitating this over and over again. Past and acted the same thing as an RFA. And guess what? He signed the day of training camp. So, my guess and I have no source on this, is that Jeremy Swayman either signs this coming Wednesday or before. Ben. And he also signs a 7.5 deal. And and one more thing I want to add, this Bruins fan base is so bipolar, <laughs> to be honest with you, because <laughs> some people some people are going to say if he signs a 7.5 deal, they're going to be like, Sweeney sucks. He, you know, he, he talked him down, this and that, blah, blah, blah. Or if he gets ten million, which I doubt, people are going to say you should have traded him. He's not worth that, and so on. So you're going to get pretty much uh, both narratives coming at you, regardless of what deal, because Boston Bruins Nation is never happy. They just never know how to make up their minds. Ben, what are your thoughts? Well, people are never happy on the internet. Internet, Mark, we know this, right? It's just a <laughs> miserable place. But the internet is undefeated, uh, my man. <laughs> it really is. No, I kind of talked about Swayman earlier this summer on, on my other podcast uh, that I started this spring on my, uh, my NHL podcast that I run because uh, I have listeners coming at me like just you know crying and worried and just losing their minds. I'm like, guys, just calm down. He's going to sign. I don't think the Bruins would have been dumb enough to trade Allmark out without some certainty that Swayman was going to come back. To your point, Mark, he's been around the team this summer. He came up to Orno this summer, played with the, the UMaine boys, his alma mater. Again, if he's not, if he's doing all those things, I really don't think there's any risk that he's going elsewhere. And like you said, he's been you know, just, you know, talking all along. I want to be here. I want to be a Bruin. Like, I'm just not worried. I, I wonder if negotiation is less about money and more about years. You know, we know that salary cap is going to continue to go up. And does Swayman say, listen, I don't want eight years. I want four. I'll take a lesser number now to bet on myself five years later to get maybe a, a bigger contract. And maybe that's where they're stuck up. Um, you say 7.5. I've been right around that 7.75 to 8.25 range. Um, and yeah, hoping for seven to eight years just to get it done so we can stop talking about it. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> I, I I agree with you, Ben. Eamon, what are your thoughts? Yeah, I totally agree with what Ben just said. Um, I think the um, the I listened to the Friedman clip. I think when he was talking about the four times six point two thing that um, Ryan Whitney reported, I think that was um, just going off what Ben said. I think that was probably the Bruins um, 
pivoting to Swayman saying that he doesn't want eight years. So they're like, okay, let's give you like less money than what we would give you long term because we don't want to pay you a long term rate for a short term job, basically. So that's kind of my thought process on what it is personally. But yeah, I just I just want it to be over with. I just want to get the season started early. Yeah, I mean, so let's say that I have them at like seven. I have them in the range of seven and a half to eight and a half right now. If he's going to sign that long term deal, it's anywhere from seven and a half to eight and a half for me. <clears throat> Whether it's a four or five, six, seven, eight year deal, I don't, I don't know. But I have them in that range because I feel like with the Bruins salary cap, they want to leave themselves some money. So with some flexibility, right? So if they need to send up guys up and down the, you know, into the AHL or whatever, back up to the NHL, they have enough money to do so without having to be crunched like they have been the past couple of years. So I think they don't want to put themselves against the wall again in another, in another cap crunch with the salary cap going up as much as it is, it's going to be up almost at a hundred million next year. I think, right. Is the, is the number um, they don't want to put themselves up against the wall the next few years. So I understand trying to go lower. So like, here's what I said when Swayman asks for like, let's say Swayman asks for 10 million, right? Let's say that rumor's true. He wants $10 million. The Bruins offer him six. What usually happens? Right in the middle. Right in the middle. <laughs> It's going to be like an arbitration where they the Swayman has an offer, the Bruins have an offer, they meet right right in a happy medium. So it's not the Bruins lowballing Swayman, it's not Swayman outpricing the Bruins, it's kind of like let's kind of meet in the middle at 8-ish, let's say, for 6, 7, 8 years and get it done. I think that's what they're doing here. And and here's another point that I want to bring up too. If, if Jeremy Swayman is actually asking for $10 million and the Boston Bruins are yesterday, when I looked at puckpedia.com, they said 8.6 million was what they had in available cap space. Does Jeremy Swayman seem like the player to you that would ask for 10 million and force his team or a teammate of his to depart to make way for his contract? I just don't see him being that type of player. You know, I, I, and I'm, I totally agree with you, Sam. I honestly think and my, my 7.5 million might be a little low, but my 8.5 is my highest. I mean, right. I'm just going with what we have available in salary cap space, but I think it's going to be a little lower. I think Darren Dreger might be, might be onto something. So, but I like what you're talking about too, Sam, is that flexibility to allow people to come up, players to come up and down. But also, I'm not worried about salary cap space because if we can keep players off of LTIR, we accrue salary cap space until the trade deadline. And if I'm not mistaken, that number could be as close to as $8 million. Exactly. And I want to point this out. Since I want to, because the and then we'll move on. The Bruins fans are very fickle about this, right? They say, "Oh, Swayman's selfish for wanting ten million dollars," and he's an asshole. Would I be an asshole if I wanted ten million dollars? Of course, I would. I want ten million dollars. Does that make me an asshole? No, it doesn't. You know what? That makes me a guy who wants money. Like it doesn't make sense. The, this idea that oh, he's selfish. Uh, no, he wants money so they can meet in the middle. I understand why, why he asked for 10 million. If that rumor is even true, I get it. So enough, enough from Bruins fans about, oh, he's selfish. I'm here. I'm, I'm an, put it off with like whining and complaining. No, he wants money. I get it. I understand that. <laughs> so enough that's of the, that. That's the narrative from the old Tuca haters. I guarantee you. They're still alive and well. <laughs> no, I know. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and what is it as as our good buddy Kevin Paul Dupont says? It's all Tuca's fault. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like what you saw? Be sure to come back next week, episode 363 of the Black and Gold Hockey Podcast, where Sam Smith and Mark Allred will preview the 2024-2025 season. See you then.